Hello, so now we are going to continue with um, other extensions of the maximum flow problem. Uh, we will start with the concept of a feasible circulation. Uh, this is a little bit different from the conventional problems we have seen so far in that in this case we do not have any source and sink. So there is still a flow but the flow is bounded by a lower capacity. So the lower capacity is given as B mu and this is in addition to the upper capacity of C mu. So both of these terms are going to be reflected across an edge. And then the general idea is that any flow which we are considering, so in the, in the, in the conventional sense we always consider that the flow is greater than or equal to zero and it's less than uh, a certain capacity. So in this case, in this case we have this continuation that the flow is of course uh, greater than zero but it is also greater than the lower bound mu where mu is a given edge and uh, the flow on this u is less than equal to the capacity on that edge or in other words we can write that the flow across mu is less than equal to the uh, upper bound of the capacity minus the lower bound of the capacity. So the objective is to find a flow assignment for a given graph such that it satisfies the constraints of a circulation. Now the circulation for the case of the circulation we can we can look at an example. So a simple case would be um, two vertices having an interconnection of a uh, an edge going from A to B where the lower bound is given as 1 and 2 and the reverse direction is given as 4 and 5. Now any flow value that is going to be assigned in the direction of A to B and from B to A must satisfy these constraints of the lower bound and upper bound. So in this case we really can see that there, uh, the first step would be to establish a circulation. So well in that case we have to run a particular algorithm, we will see how to do that. But once we obtain a circulation we have to look at its feasibility. So considering that the upper bound is 2 and then any flow coming into this direction will have to go out in this direction, well in that case the upper bound of 2 and the lower bound of 4 is having a mismatch. So we can basically say that there is no feasible circulation for this problem. So coming to the case of a circulation, the answer is not just to obtain a circulation of a particular set of flows, but also to, to get a feasibility in a form of a yes no answer and then that is uh, we are left with the question of how to determine this circulation in the first place well the easiest way is uh, just like the other in the other approaches we reduce the problem to a maximum flow problem well we are going to do the same in this case as well so we can see how this works by taking into an account an algo uh, to a graph 1, a graph comprising of 3 vertices 1, 2 and 3 which are interconnected in this manner. So here the lower bound from 1 to 2 is 4 while the upper bound is 20. The lower bound from 2 to 3 is 1 while the upper bound is 10 and the lower bound from 3 to 1 is 4 while the upper bound is 15. So we need to convert this graph G into another graph G bar. So let me paste this over here for reference. So the idea is that this G has to be converted to another graph G bar where you take into account the 
set of vertices comprising of the original um, uh, 1, 2, 3 uh, vertices labeled 1, 2, 3 in G. So we can get them over here 1, 2 and 3. And in addition to that we include two new vertices S bar and T bar. Now as I said that there is no source and sink in the original graph G. If we are to reduce this problem to a maximum flow problem then we have to introduce the 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 vertex labels s bar which will play the role of a source and the vertex t bar which is going to play the role of a sink and as far as the edges in g bar is concerned well the first step is that we have to introduce all of the edges which were there in the original graph so we can get 1 to 2 2 to 3 and then 3 to 1 and in addition we introduce edges from all the of the vertices of the original graph G to T bar so in that case we can have 2 to T bar 3 to T bar and 1 to T bar and likewise we introduce edges from S bar to all of the vertices of the original graph G so we can introduce this s bar to v uh, to to 1 s bar to 3 and there will be an overlapping edge so we can draw it in this manner from s to 2 the next step will be to assign some some capacities on these edges so so this is going to be done uh, by taking into account these set of rules uh, let me show that to you so the very first step the very f okay let me clean this so the very first step is that we have to take into account all of the edges from s bar to v and in that case we have to consider the incoming edges okay we need to get this graph over here also so let me bring this down uh, to the next slide so that we can use this for reference also so in this case uh, all the incoming uh, edges on that particular vertices they have to be summed up and put into the edges from s bar to v so as an example if we take the case of one in the case of one the incoming edge into one is the uh, the incoming uh, lower bound into one is four so that would imply that we have to place the capacity four over here if we take the case of uh, vertex 2, well, the incoming lower bound of the edge, the lower bound value is 4. So in that case, for 2, we also place the value of 4. And as far as the 3 is concerned, well, the incoming edge with the lower bound of 1 is going to be placed over here. Then the second step is that we have to take into account the lower bound of the outgoing edge for all of the vertices moving from v to t bar so in this case if we take into account the vertex one the lower bound of the outer of the of the of the edge going outwards is four so from one v from one to t bar we are going to place four and for the case of two the outgoing uh, the outgoing edge has a lower bound of 1 so in that case from 2 to t bar we are going to place 1 and in the case of 3 the outbound edge has a lower bound of 4 so in that case we are going to place 4 over here on this edge and then the final step is that on the existing uh, on the edges from u to v not s bar and t bar we simply have to subtract the lower bound from the upper bound so in this case what we are going to be left with is 20 minus 4 is going to be 16 in this case 10 minus 1 is going to be 9 and in this case 15 minus 4 is going to be 11 please note that there is a summation involved so as an example I'll, I'll erase this later on just suppose if we take into account um, another vertex 4 
moving a flow commodity from 4 to 3 with a lower bound of 2 and a maximum bound of let's suppose 5. We have to make adjustments accordingly. So in this case if we move from S bar to 3, the incoming lower bound is 1 and 2. So this is really going to be 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So with this we can we can see I'll, I'll reverse these changes. So with this we can now see that our uh, feasible problem has been a uh, feasible circulation problem has been converted into a max flow problem and from that point we can run the conventional ford fulkerson algorithm to arrive with a uh, maximum flow so i need to i need to uh, do this solution uh, quickly so let me go to the next slide uh, we can reduce the size of this graph so maybe slightly larger so this is fine okay so the first step is to list all of the uh, edges we have s to 1 we have s to 2 and s to 3 we have 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 1 followed by 1 to t 2 to t and 3 to t and of course we are going to get the flow for each of the paths which we identified plugging in the values we have 4 for 2 we have 4 and for 3 we have 1 1 and 2 is 16 2 and 3 is 9 and 3 and 1 is 11 1 and t is 4, 2 and t is 1 and 3 and t is 4. So we can identify some paths. Please note that in this case the augmented paths must contain some of the edges which are there in the original graph G. So for us the candidates are S bar to 1 to 2 and from that we can move towards t. So please note that in this case 1 to 2 is already present in the original graph. And then we can do one step further. We can move from s to 1, from 1 to 2 and from 2 to 3 and in this manner we can get exit the system from 3 to t. So in, in a similar manner we can we can construct the other uh, paths also. We can move from s bar okay we have a bar over here we can move from s bar to 2 followed by 3 and t bar we can move from s bar to 2 to 3 to 1 followed by t bar we can move from s bar to 3 to uh, so 3 is going towards 1 and then we can go from 1 to t bar and we can also move from s bar to 3 to 1 to 2 followed by t bar so as per convention we have to consider the uh, smaller length paths first of all and in this case we can start with these paths we can go by this in a sequential order so taking into the case the first case we have s bar to 1 followed by 1 to 2 followed by 2 to t so in this case we can take the flow of 1 deduct it from the remaining so we have we are left with 3 4 1 15 9 11 4 0 and 4 then in the second case we can go for s to 2 followed by 2 to 3 followed by 3 to t so in this case the minimum value is 4 subtracting it we are going to get 3 0 1 15 uh, 9 minus 4 is 5 11 4 0 and 0 and then the last case is uh, and then the third case is uh, s to 3 followed by 3 to 1 followed by 1 to t so in this case the minimum value is again 1 and we can represent uh, we can subtract this value from all of the uh, chosen edges so this is going to be 0 15 5 10 3 0 
and 0. Now you can note here that uh, the only way of moving some commodity from S to the rest of the graph is through the edge S1 and uh, this leaves us with these sets of paths and the only way of moving the commodity back uh, to T is through 1 also. So in this case is these two paths identified none of them is using 1 to T. So we are left with we, we are left with no other option but to manually chalk out a path of a very large length and then we can per perhaps consider the case of S to 1 and then from 1 to 2 and then from 2 to 3 followed by 3 to 1 and then we can move from 1 to t and in that case we can write down the minimum as 3 and subtracting this we are going to left we are going to be left with 0 0 0 15 minus 3 is 12 2 we have 7 0 0 and 0 now at this point if you analyze the graph what has happened is that we have completely saturated all of the edges from S to any other vertices of the graph and we have also exhausted all of the edges ending at the vertex T and if we determine the flow well in this case the maximum flow is going to be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so we have 9 over here and if we consider the cut across this line, so we have a score of 4, 4 and 1, 9. We have a score of a cut as 9. And since the maximum flow is now equal to the total saturation flow uh, from S to V or from V to T, then in that case we can say that the feasible solution in this case exists okay so the next extension is the case of a minimum cost flow actually this is not just a single minimization factor we we are looking at a minimum cost as well as the maximum flow we want to maximize the flow as well as we want to minimize the cost both at the same time. So this is also known as the transportation problem. So the, the idea is that we take into account that for each edge we take into account the terms the maximum capacity and the cost of the movement of commodity across that edge. Now in the case that the maximum flow is referred to the summation of all of the flows along the augmented paths we multiply it with the cost along those flows and we need to minimize this quantity so this basically becomes our transshipment problem so we can take into account as an example graph suppose we have the case of s x y z and T and the movement of commodities from S to X has a capacity of 15 and a cost of 4 from X to T it has a capacity of 14 and a cost of 1 from Z to T a capacity of 8 and a cost of 2 from Y to Z a capacity of 17 and a cost of 3 from X to Z a capacity of 13 and a cost of 6 from y to x a capacity of 11 and a cost of 2 and from s to y a capacity of 16 and a cost of 1. Now we need to establish all of the different paths which will allow us to move from s to t. So let's enumerate them one by one. Well, starting from the shorter ones, we can move from S to X to T. Then we have S to X. From X we can move towards Z and from Z we can move towards T. 
so this part is exhausted then we can move from s to y from y we can move towards x from x we can move towards t and of course we can plug in a small variation of this so from x we can move towards z and from z we can move towards t and then the uh, the other case is that of s to y so we don't go towards x we can just simply go directly towards z and from z we can go towards t now in the conventional approach of the maximum flow problem we have to consider the paths of minimum length and solve them uh, first but in this case for each of the paths which we have identified we have to associate or we have to associate the uh, uh, compute the total cost of movement along each path so if we take the case of s x and t well in that case the movement of uh, a commodity will have a cost of 4 and 1 so we can plug in the value of uh, 5 for the first path okay so this becomes 5 for the second case we have s to x so we have 4 from 4 plus 6 is going to be 10 and then from 10 plus 2 is going to be 12 then in the case of s to y to x so we take the add up 1 3 and uh, 4 so okay this gives us a value of 4 the moment from s to y is 1 from y to x is 2 so this becomes 3 3 and 6 is 9 and then we get 11 over here and then the final path is s to y so 1 1 plus 3 is 4 and 4 plus 2 is equal to 5 so the idea is that instead of choosing paths of smaller length we are going to choose paths of the shortest uh, of the minimum cost and that implies that the order in which we are going to apply these these uh, paths are going to be starting with four initially then we can go in any order of these because they have the same cost then we go towards um, let's let's make this three then we go towards 11 with the cost uh, in the fourth number and finally we end up with 5. So now we are going to uh, make a state space so we can plug in all of the um, edges. We can plug in S to X. We can have, okay let, let's start with the S initially. So we have S and Y. Then from that we can have Y and X then we can go from y to z we can go from x to z and then finally we can go to x to t and then z to t and we can plug in the capacity along each of these x uh, of these edges so from s to x we have 15 then we have 16 y to x is 11 y to z is 17 x to z is 13 followed by 14 and 8. So now we can continue with the uh, selection of the first path and continue with enumerating the flow across that path. We can, we can mention the flow across that path as well as the, the cost along that path. So taking into the case of 1, let's highlight it. So we have s to y actually let me change the color of this so we can change this to black okay so we can we can move from s to y from y to x and uh, from x to t the minimum cost uh, the minimum uh, 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 capacity along this path is 11 so plugging in that value and we can plug in 4 over here and doing the subtraction we are left with 15 16 minus 11 is uh, 5 we are left with 0 17 13 3 and 8 then we can move on towards the second path so this is done we can move to the second path so in that case we have to choose s to x and from x to t 
choosing the minimum capacity as 3 and of course the cost along that path is 5. So subtracting the values we are going to be left with 12, 5, 0, 17, 13, 0 and 8. Then this is done moving ahead to the path number 3. In this case we have the option of S to Y followed by Y to Z followed by Z to T. So in this case the minimum capacity is 5. Choosing that of course the cost along that is also 5. So we do a subtraction and are left with 0, 0, this is 12, 13, 0 and 3. This is also done. Moving to the uh, to the to the path number 4. In this case we are going to highlight S to Y. So okay so we can take the case uh, of S to Y as 0 over here. So so we don't need to construct the rest. We can we can identify straight away that this is going to be 0 and the cost is going to be 11. And then followed by that we are going to move towards uh, so this is not done in the sense but we have really gone through it. And then we are left with S to X going to the last part. So S to X let me, let me plug in the values down because we just skipped a path. So moving with S to X from X to Z and from Z to T we choose the minimum capacity as 3 and of course the cost along that path is 12. And then subtracting 3 from all of these cases we are left with 9, 0, 0, 12, 10, 0 and 0. Okay, so as far as the maximum flow is concerned, we can add this together. We are going to be left with 11 and 5, 16, 19, okay, 22. So as far as the maximum flow, the summation of the flow across all of the paths that is going to be 22 and the summation of the flow as well as the cost. Well, that has to be taken into account individually uh, as 11 into 4 plus 3 into 5 plus 5 into 5 plus. Okay, so this is 0 into 11 and then um, let, let's write it just for argument's sake and then we are left with 3 into 12. So this is going to be equivalent to, let's do the math. Okay, 44, 15, 25, 0, 36. Okay, maybe we should add it like this. 36, 25, 15, and 44. So, 20, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so in this case, this is equal to 120. Now from a saturation point of view, we can notice that S, Y and Y, X are exhausted. Um, S, Y and Y, X are exhausted. Likewise, X, T and Z, T have also been exhausted. So as a result, we can see that the graph has been divided into two components and of course, since we take the case of the cut set identified, um, okay, let's change the color from yellow to black. So if we take the cut set, really the, the, the minimum set which can divide the graph into two components is the pair, is the pair 14 and 8, which is equivalent to 22. Which, which is still consistent with the maximum flow representation which we have. And the only difference is that this, uh, this, uh, this representation it has been aligned with the respect of the minimum cost and that has given us the minimum cost solution for the problem. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. See you in the next lecture.